to do. Will you go and get acquainted with the new team that you're joining tonight? Yeah. I want you to get to know them, okay? And whilst you do that, all we have to do now uh, is while they get to know each other, is to wish the investigation team lots of luck. Because what we're going to do is we're going to send them off live to our first location. Now, what is that about? Well, it's a derelict house in Derby, and it has a very interesting past. That's all I'm going to tell you at this particular point. So, without further ado, Yvette, please, will you take your team yep. to the first of tonight's oh. locations? Okay. Bye, everyone. So there they go, off to the first location. Well, you see, the lovely thing is I haven't told them where they're going. Um, so where are they going? Well, we sent them to a place called John Flamsteed's Home. It's situated on Queen Street in Derby City Centre, and it's a home. Now, what we can do tonight is bring up a 3D model of where they're going. So let's see that right now. Okay, um, John Flamsteed, there, this is the house. Now, John Flamsteed was the first royal astronomer. He was appointed by Charles II, and this is the house that he lived in in Derby. Now it looks like a very normal kind of house, but he was very interested in both astronomy and astrology. And it was there as a young boy that he actually uh, learnt more about his craft. And he used to look out of the window and he would make his observations. And from Derby he went to London and where he became the first of the Royal Astronomers. And actually uh, the Greenwich, Greenwich Observatory was built for him. Uh, we'll hear more about that a little later on. But that is the house. It looks very nice, but it actually has a dark past. Now, we saw uh, earlier on that Kieran O'Keefe is our new paranormal investigator, and so what we did is we sent him there earlier on, and this is what he told us. Tonight, in this house, I expect the investigative team to experience quite a lot of phenomena. A sense of presence, perhaps a drop in temperature, even spine tingling, these sort of things. Now. The focus I expect to be in the attic, because that's where a lot of the reports have come from. So, what do King Charles II, a derelict house in the middle of Derby, and Greenwich meantime have in common? You'll find out after this break. Most Haunted Live, and welcome back to one of our biggest investigations to date, right here in Derby. Now, on tonight's show, we aim to investigate five, yes, five different locations around Derby, which is well regarded as England's ghost capital. With over 1,000 paranormal sightings, it's no wonder. Now, tonight, we will be visiting the Silk Mill, the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. We'll also see a vigil at R Below. That's a site which is known as the Stonehenge of the North. And later we move our investigation to the banks of the River Derwent, which may be home to some river ghosts. And we'll finish up at Ye Oldie Dolphin Pub, where there have been reported sightings of floating trousers. Well, anyway, it's definitely going to be a very huge night here on Most Haunted Live, especially for our team of investigators, which of course includes members selected from our audience. Now, I also know that the team are close to arriving at John Flamsted's home, but first of all, I've got a phone call, someone on the line. Uh, is Selena there? Hi, yes, I am. Hello, Selena. Um, tell us, uh, you're watching the show at home, aren't you? I am, yes. But you've got a little story for us. I have, yeah. Um, I phoned up to, t to tell people about uh, one of my relatives lived in a cottage in Derby, which has had some very strange paranormal activity happening within it, and uh, thought everybody there might want to know a bit more about it. And what do you know about that paranormal activity? Well, it's actually um, a relative of mine, seems to be very sensitive to this sort of activity. She's actually seen a woman in the cottage dressed in sort of 60s um, attire, um, and she's heard giggling noises, and very strange things have been happening, like um, sometimes she can smell like cabbage cooking in the kitchen when uh, nobody's in the kitchen cooking anything, um, which is obviously a lovely experience. And also the other smell is patchouli oil, 
um, which comes and goes like a, a spot. It arrives and it goes really suddenly, which I've obviously seen the team experience in some of the visits that they've made. And where, where are these cottages, roughly? Um, uh, they're over by the golf course in Derby. I'm not sure. Okay. Right. Well, let's ask our historians over there. Do, can you shed any light on those particular cottages? Well, uh, a certain extent. It's, it's very near Bredstall Priory, uh, which actually goes back to the 13th century. And a um, lot of activity around there. I'm not quite sure how old those cottages are. They certainly go back to the 18th century. And um, who knows how many people lived and died in those cottages and probably on that site even before those cottages were built. So it's just one of the many, many ghostly sightings and goings on in and around Derby. Do you think you could look into this for Selena? Oh, of course we will. Fabulous. Absolutely. Selena, yeah. we'll look into it for you. Thank uh, you, that's great. Good, and keep watching the show tonight. Oh, well. Great stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, Yvette has just arrived at the location. We're going to go to them in just a minute. I think we can see pictures of them. There we are. You can see Yvette behind me. Uh, we'll, we'll go to them in just a minute. But uh, first of all, we've got news of our viewer competition, haven't we, Julian? Yeah, thanks, David. And here's a thought. 50,000 people wanted to be here tonight. Uh, and we've got four pairs of tickets for Monday's night show. So this really is a very special competition we're about to launch. And it's the first competition we've done on Most Haunted Live, so we're really excited about it. Now, if you'd like to win the tickets for Monday night show, this is how it works. Where does Derek Acora come from? Is it A, London, B, Liverpool, or C, Lithuania? No shouting out on the audience, by the way. So quiet. Um, okay, those are the three choices, London, Liverpool, Lithuania. Now, it's a text competition, so you need your mobile. Text haunted, then a space, comp for competition, then another space, then your answer, A, B, or C, then your name. And the number, all importantly, 80088. Four winners drawn at the end of the show coming here on Monday night. We're looking forward to seeing you. David. Thank you very much indeed, Gillian. Okay, back to the first of tonight's locations. Now, John Flamsteed's house. Okay, now what did I tell you about that earlier? Well, he was the first person to become the royal astronomer. He lived in Derby. This is where he knew all about astronomy and astrology. Here's a little bit more about the house that he lived in right here in Derby. If ever a place needed blue plaques, then this house does. In this building in 1794, Joseph Wright, the painter, died. This was also the home of John Whitehurst, the very famous clockmaker. And on two occasions, Benjamin Franklin, the American statesman, stayed here in this house. But most of all, the most important and famous person that had anything to do with this place is John Flamsteed. Nearly 300 years ago, John Flamsteed lived in this very house. He was a personal friend to King Charles II, and he was also the first astronomer royal. Apparently, the whole house is haunted. Ghostly footsteps are heard, doors open and close on their own. But this isn't the most haunted room. For that, we have to go upstairs. Tonight, in this house, I expect the investigative team to experience quite a lot of phenomena. A sense of presence, perhaps a drop in temperature, even spine tingling, these sort of things. Now, the focus I expect to be in the attic, because that's where a lot of the reports have come from. The one particular room I wouldn't wish to stay in, I, I would think, would be Annie's room, which is the third floor workshop. There was always an eerie feeling up there if you were on your own. Um, it was called Annie's room because Annie was the maid of John Smith the First's wife. I, I don't really know where it's derived from. It's just always been known as Annie's room as, lo as long as I can remember. There's a story um, about a director when he was locking up one night. Uh, he was at the top of the stairs up there and he saw a figure go past the bottom of the stairs. Um, and um, two clockmakers were working in the small repairs department and um, a third one was called Fred White and he used to have a snooze at lunchtime he used to snore very loudly and David and George were sitting having their lunch and they could hear this snoring and David thought gosh Fred's driving them home again and then he suddenly thought hang on a minute Fred's not here he's out so he opened the door to 